Former CEO of uh, the London Health Sciences in Ontario was fired earlier this week for his various travels to the United States for what was defined as non-essential personal reasons. But uh, now Mr. Paul Woods is suing the LHSC, saying he was open with the board about his plans and that his human rights are being violated by his termination. Well, are they? Possibly. Uh, Leo Samfiro is with us. Mr. Samfiro is the co-founding partner at Samfiro to Markin LLP, with offices in Toronto, Ottawa, Calgary, and Vancouver. Leo, Leo, thank you very much for the time. Uh, does he have a case? So th- what's interesting here, Roy, is that the issue of, of cause is not even in dispute. The hospital acknowledged that despite the fact that uh, Mr. Woods uh, traveled uh, numerous times, that's not cause for dismissal. In fact, they've paid him already a hefty severance package. But what he's saying is this, well, since I got permission, I, I was open with the board, they said, yeah, go ahead and do it, and now you're throwing me under the bus. You're, you're making me seem like this bad guy that's going to hurt my career, and I went there to see my family. And so because of that, th- those damages that he's claiming, I actually think that there is a case here if, in fact, it's true, if he can establish that his, uh, that his travel was approved and then he was thrown under the bus in order for London Health Sciences to make themselves look better and make him look like the villain. So, yeah, I actually think there is a, a case here that uh, may result in some uh, compensation for this gentleman. Interesting. Uh, just a generic question during the pandemic. Are some decisions on situations, maybe like this, being made somewhat on the fly because we haven't encountered them previously? Well, absolutely. This is a new world. This is a new environment, new situation, and decisions have to be made or invariably are made under the fly. And also, decisions sometimes are are based on public pressure and public perception. Uh, You know, a lot of the the terminations we've seen and and the the fallout from various people in in high-profile positions traveling, a lot of that was a result of public pressure and public reaction. Uh, Some of these organizations may not have taken the same moves if uh, members of the public didn't care. So this is definitely uh, unprecedented times in many ways. Yeah, Leo, I was talking to somebody uh, about this case a little earlier this morning, and we started sort of looking at other, extrapolating different situations that might occur. And and this one came up. What about the Ontario stay-at-home mandate for 28 days or maybe longer if someone is found to have violated the mandate and visited friends or family or traveled around the province and the employer finds out and says, well, you violated the stay-at-home mandate, so you're fired for that. Is that with cause or, or not? In most cases, that would be without cause simply because there was no, there's not going to be a direct impact on the workplace. So if someone violates uh, a health order, for example, when they're supposed to be quarantining and they're not, and they come into work, well, now you're putting people at, at, at work at risk. That absolutely could be caused. But generally speaking, a violation of an order where obviously we're not happy about that, everyone should be following it, but it doesn't impact the workplace would not be caused. Now, where, where I can see it being caused is a situation when we are dealing with someone that has a high-profile role within the organization and their actions may reflect badly on the organization. At that point, that organization can say, well, you represent us. You're our public figure, our public persona. You're expected to make us look good. And by you doing what you're doing, now we're in a bad light. You should have known better. That may be cause, but for most people... Yeah, obviously we expect people to comply with these orders, but that's not necessarily something that an employer can hold against an employee. Okay, if I can go back to Mr. Woods again in in London, uh, the health sciences there. Does he have to demonstrably prove that he did inform the board of his intent to travel, and does he have to demonstrably prove that the board understood, knew, and approved of his travel? For the type of case that he's brought uh, right now, which is really the damage to his career and reputation and potentially loss of future earnings, yes, he absolutely has to prove that. Uh, and that's the only way he could be successful is by showing that he wasn't off on his own doing something that the hospital did not approve of, because if that was the case, if he was uh, on a, some sort of a frolic on his own, the hospital didn't know, in fact, he was being dishonest, well, certainly whatever came of that is his fault and his fault alone. On the other hand, if the hospital knew, uh, if they uh, agreed, and if they condoned that behavior, 
Well, now by trying to paint him in a negative light, that, that certainly is going to impact his future compensation. Sure. He may not be someone that could get a, another position very quickly because of that. So there could easily be liability uh, for the hospital if, if, in fact, that's how the, the facts play out. Yeah, situations like that, essentially, at a time like this, can turn into public shaming events. Uh, Lior, what's the best way for our listeners who have issues with employment law to to get in touch with you and your firm? Uh, The best way, easiest way, Roy, is employmentlawyer.ca. It's our website with all the contact information. It's really an interesting uh, and challenging time for employees and employers, and always happy to help anyone. All right, employmentlawyer.ca. If you want to hear more, subscribe to The Roy Green Show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you find your favorites. And if you like what you hear, leave us a review and tell a friend. I'm Roy Green. Have a great weekend.